I'd like to call the Gurney Village Board regular meeting of November 4th, 2019 to order. Roll call, please, Donna. Ross. Here. Garner. Here. O'Brien. Present. Bombas. Present. Hood. Here. Thorstenson. Here. All present. All right. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, good evening. First up is approval of the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? So second. Motion by Trustee Garner, second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call, please, Donna. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Bombas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. All ayes. All right, motion carries. Patrick, please read the consent agenda into the record. And number one, approval of the minutes from the October 21st, 2019 and October 28th, 2019 Village Board meetings. And number two, approval of payroll for period ending October 25th, 2019 in the amount of $883,381.48. And number three, approval of bills for period ending November 4th, 2019 in the amount of $594,257.28. Thank you, Patrick. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as read into the record? Motion by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee Garner. Roll call, please, Donna. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Balmas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. All ayes. All right, motion carries. Uh, Move on to petitions and communications. The first is a proclamation for National American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month. November 2019, during National American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month, we honor the accomplishments and cultures of these groups and recognize their contributions to our village, state, and country. And the first American Indian Day was celebrated in May 1916 in New York, and in 1990, President Bush signed a joint congressional resolution designating November as National American Indian Heritage Month. And in 2005, the National Museum of the American Indian opened in Washington, D.C. to educate the public and illustrate the important role of Native people. And the Village of Gurney joins other communities across our nation in celebrating and recognizing the many contributions and legacies that are attributed to these Americans. Now, therefore, I, Christina Kavark, Mayor of Gurney, do hereby proclaim and call upon the citizens of the village of Gurney, Illinois, to join in observing this month of November 2019 as American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month. Motion to approve. So moved. Motion by Trustee Ross, second by Trustee Balmas. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. National American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month. Uh, our next but next proclamation is the Warren Township High School Future Business Leaders of America for the American Enterprise Day. And I believe we have two students with us tonight. All right, I'll read the proclamation in and then you can come to the microphone and, and tell us a little bit about what you plan. So it's November 15th, 2019. The village would like to acknowledge the Warren Township High School Future Business Leaders of America Phi Beta Lambda chapter for its celebration of American enterprise. And the American enterprise system allows us to buy, sell, and exchange goods and services in an open market with few restrictions. And the members of Warren Township High School's FBLA PBL have learned to cherish that freedom. And FBLA's PBL's mission is to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. And FBLA PBL is on the leading edge of career and technical education and promotes business ethics as part of the education it provides students. And local chapters of FBLA PBL annually observe November 15th as American Enterprise Day and promote education about and appreciation of the American Enterprise System in their communities. And the Warren Township High School FBLA PBL chapter 
celebrates by distributing certificates to local businesses to thank them for their participation in the American Enterprise System. Now, therefore, I, Christina Kavarik, Mayor of the Village of Gurney, do hereby proclaim November 15th as American Enterprise Day in the Village of Gurney. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Balmas. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Young ladies, you'd like to come to the microphone and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about November 15th, American Enterprise Day. Hello, um, I'm Alexis Elbrecht. This is Kendall Parr, and we are going to be speaking on behalf of the American Enterprise Committee at Warren. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Warren FBLA, what we've been up to, and then Kendall will tell you a little bit about our project. So recently, this past weekend, we went down to Bloomington, Illinois, uh, with a few other Illinois chapters. And there we went to workshops. We heard from several guest speakers. We also went to Iron Coyote Ropes course. So overall, it was a very good experience for Warren FBLA. And so now we are approaching competition season, so Kendall will tell you a little bit about that. Hi, everyone. I'm Kendall. The American Enterprise Project will consist of spreading the knowledge of the American Enterprise throughout Warren Township High School. FBLA will be doing this by starting off with a short quiz and about the American Enterprise and Business Basics to test the students' prior knowledge. We then will go over the quiz and present a presentation containing more information about the American Enterprise, business knowledge, and tips to help the students prepare for their future. Following the presentations, we will be playing a kahoot about the information given in the presentation to test their subsequent knowledge and to measure their growth. This event will occur at both the Allman and O'Plain campuses. We will be comparing the differences in the amount of prior knowledge and knowledge growth between the two campuses. With this, the data will be put into a report and will be presented at Northern Area Conference in January and will hopefully move on to future conferences. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent job. Data does rule everything. Uh, so good luck in your competitions and thank you for coming tonight. All right, that's all of our petitions and communications tonight. We will move on to reports um, from Lauterbach and Amen on our CAFR Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for the year ending April 30th, 2019. And if you just want to introduce yourself for the board. You got it. Yes, Brian, do you have an intro? Are you good? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Ann Van Voren. I'm a principal at Lauterbach and Amen. Um, we completed the audit um, for the 2019 fiscal year. Um, so I believe you should have two reports in front of you. One is the management letter, and then one is the, the actual um, comprehensive annual financial report. So I'll just briefly uh, walk through both of those um, for you. So I'll start with the management letter. There were just two comments that we had issued um, during the current year, and one related to GASB statement number 75 um, for the post-employment benefits, which has been implemented into the current year CAFR. And then the second comment was the funds over budget. And in 2018, you'll see that there were several funds that were listed as over budget, and, but there were no funds in 2019. So both of those comments will be removed in next year's um, reports. Um, and then moving on to the CAFR, um, just to quickly, I'll go through a couple of the pages that are kind of important to just note. Um, we issued the audit opinion on page 13. We issued an unmodified opinion, which is the best that we can issue as auditors. So this is just stating that everything mater is materially correct and that the internal controls that we had tested were also um, com in compliance. Page 16 is the management discussion and analysis. If there's anything to read in the report, I would recommend reading this section just because it, it gives a great overview of the entire fiscal year and it's much shorter than the rest of the CAFR. Uh, page uh, 31 starts the statement of net position. So this will include your, um, it's the full accrual and it includes the capital assets and the long-term um, debt for the village. Page 35 is the fund level statements. Uh, you'll see that the general fund assets had increased uh, to two million, to just over $2 million. And then the, which included the total cash and investments of $2 million, $2.1 million, sorry. Uh, the general fund um, overall, their uh, fund balance increased $700,000, uh, which ended had an ending fund balance of $26.7 million at the end of the fiscal year. 
And so this, looking at the ending fund balance with the budgeted expenditures, had a percentage of about 60.16%. Sorry, 16.16%. Uh, page 41 is the proprietary funds. So this includes the golf course and the water and sewer funds. The uh, water and sewer had an unrestricted fund balance of $5.6 million. Uh, notes to the financial statement starts on page 47. So this is just more details to the actual numbers that you'll see in those earlier statements, as well as some general um, just accounting language that are requ is required in the report. Page 71 is the long-term debt note. And you'll see that the total long-term debt de decreased um, by a million dollars, which was the principal that was paid during the year. So the total outstanding debt is $4.3 million. Page 111 is the budget, starts the budget to actual statement. So you'll see for each of the funds, the actual, um, actual uh, amounts that occurred during the fiscal year compared to the, what was approved by the board for the budget. And then page 142 starts the statistical section, which is just good 10-year trend information um, related to property taxes, long-term debt, and other additional information for the village um, comparing for 10 years. I wanted to thank Brian for all of his work working with us, um, getting the report in front of you from start to finish, from the first entrance conference all the way to the meeting tonight. He was great to work with and very responsive. And uh, yeah, so it's always been a good relationship um, with the firm and him. Do you have any questions about the reports in front of you or the audit process in general? Um, we appreciate your hard work on it because we like to have a good passing grade on our CAFR. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Brian and his team work really hard on it, accounting for every penny. Um, and we'll be publishing this. Okay. Um, any questions from the trustees? This is really, this really is good reading. I mean, it's a lot of numbers and stuff, but it really does capture and give you a visual of how we're performing financially. So um, I would take the time to read it. Yeah, um, like Ann said, I mean, the management discussion and analysis is where you want to focus, and it's good reading, especially when it's good news. So as you saw in Brian's memo and Ann hit on, fund balances are up, general fund, water sewer fund. Um, you know, debt's been reduced. Obviously, it'll be reduced to zero here shortly uh, when we make those payments. Um, and pay off the Macy's bonds. So, I mean, things are heading in the right direction. It's sometimes that's hard to pull out of this with as detailed as it is with all the numbers. Um, but Brian's memo hit some of the highlights with the page numbers listed. And obviously, after you, or as you look through it, if you have any questions, get a hold of him and he can explain further. All right. Well, Ann, I appreciate it very much and all your hard work. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. All right, it's our only report. We have no Correct. old business. Correct. So we will move on to new business. And the first item is approval of ordinance 2019. 74. 74, approving a special use permit pursuant to the Gurney zoning ordinance for 6557 Route 132, Suite 200, commonly known as Hellsburg Diamond. Yeah, so you had a memo from our associate planner, uh, Clara Gable, in your packet. Uh, Trace is also here to clarify anything that I may screw up here. Uh, so Hellsburg is in requesting a special use permit for the installation of uh, some additional wall size. Uh, the zoning ordinance allows two signs, um, one at 56 square feet and one at 175 square feet. What they're looking for uh, related to wall signs are uh, three signs, one on the north, one on the west, and one on the south wall. That is a, a halo lit um, backer panel that's both each is 62 square feet and then at the northwest um, corner of the building um, they're looking for a what has been determined by staff to be a sign um, that's a backlit metal uh, panel sign um, that's more decorative in nature that'll wrap around both sides of the wall so the PZB um, took a look at it uh, as it relates to the the signs and the request weren't overly concerned about the increase in the size of the signs um, based on the type and what's actually measured for the signage itself. Um, when they looked at um, the uh, northwest corner, um, they thought that added a higher quality um, element to the building um, and were in favor of that. The sign on the south side, which is on the back side of the building, the only reason the special use permit is required for that is because it has no 
uh, windows or entrances on that backside, remember we approved a similar sign for McAllister. So when you pull off a hunt club into that entrance there, they wanted to identify the presence in the building by getting some signage on that south side. Um, so those are uh, is what is before you tonight. There are some uh, illustrations uh, in your packet so you can see what the signs um, will look like, uh, the ratio uh, to the front of the building, um, as well as that, that northwest corner, what they're planning to do there. So this is a new sign package that they're rolling out. We're one of the first Hellsbergs, I believe, um, that they're looking to install this signage on. Well, that's really a nice upgrade to that building. It's yeah. really sharp looking. All right, questions for Pat, Tracy, petitioner here? No, okay. I make a motion to approve. It's a nice, nice amenity. All right, I have a motion to approve from Trustee Balmas, second from Trustee Garner. Roll call, please, Donna. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Balmas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. All ayes. All right, motion carries. Again, that's really slick looking. It's nice to see the investment. Oh. oh, oh, you were? Okay. No, that's really sharp looking on the outside. Really. I know. I know. Best pearls anywhere around. All right. We open at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, item number two is approval of ordinance 2019-75, granting a zoning text amendment pursuant to Article 8, uses of the Gurney Zoning Ordinance. Sure. So the next two are some zoning text amendments that planning has been working on. I'll cover the first one because that's easier. Tracy can handle driveways. So uh, the first one relates to car washes and a couple of requirements that were in the zoning ordinance. Um, or standards. Um, one was that they must be screened along interior and rear uh, lot lines with a solid fence, a minimum of six feet in height, and then it has some shrub requirements as well. Uh, the second standard was that they need to be designed to drain away from adjoining properties. When they come in, since they're uh, a special use permit, the engineering division looks at them on a case by case basis as far as the screening and the drainage. So, in some instances, requiring that screen screening. Um, along the interior side and rear lot lines may not be what we want based on the site. Um, so again, since it's looked at by the engineering process through the, through the permitting process, engineering can take a look at those on a case by case basis. So really lo looking to just um, remove those two standards and have it handled um, by <coughs> staff on a case by case as relates to car washes. So that's the first, so that's 2019-75. Uh, all right, questions um, for Pat or Tracy's here? Simplifies things, makes it easy for those that are coming in. I have no questions. Motion approved. I have a motion to approve from Trustee Thorstenson, second, second. from Trustee Ross. Roll call, please. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Bomas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. All ayes. <clears throat> All right, motion carries. Next item is approval of ordinance 2019-76, granting a zoning text amendment pursuant to Article 11, off-street parking and loading of the Gurney Zoning Ordinance. So, Tracy, you're going to walk us through it? Sure. Um, so, when we adopted the zoning ordinance back in 2015, we enacted some new regulations. One of the regulations um, we put on were maximum widths of driveways, and we have different driveway widths if it's associated with an attached garage versus a detached garage. Um, we also, at the same time, adopted impervious surface ratio maximums for residential. So we have that always to fall back on, something that we never used to have. Um, the reason that we started to regulate driveway widths was because we were concerned that people were starting to pave over their yards and store you know, vehicles and other equipment. Um, at the time that we did the text amendments, we wanted to, we 
we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to create a lot of non-conforming situations, and so we tried to survey as many lots as we could just to kind of see, you know, what the driveway widths were for attached and detached garage. Um, we thought we had a good width. We established the width for detached garages at 12 feet. Um, over the past three years, we have found that that is substandard to what a lot of um, existing homes have that have detached garages. So we started looking at other communities and what they had, and we found a number of communities that were kind of like us years ago. They don't regulate driveway widths, either for attached or detached garages. Um, we also found some that um, established a 24-foot width, which was similar to an attached um, garage driveway. So um, what we did was uh, we looked at I think about 10 communities. Um, there were some that did have a difference between attached and detached. Um, one had uh, width that was similar to what we were proposing. I think it was Buffalo Grove or Wheeling, um, but they had an 18-foot width. What we're proposing is we're proposing to change the width from 12 feet for a detached garage to 14 feet if it's a one car garage, uh, 16 feet if it's a two car garage, 18 feet if it's a three car or more garage. And for the purposes of this ordinance, the garage, if it's a one or a two car, is determ determined by the width of the garage and every nine feet equals one car. So if it's a uh, you know, two, uh, 18 foot, wide garage, it would be a two-car garage. If it's a 20-foot wide garage, it would be a two-car garage. Keep in mind that our existing code for an attached garage has a 24-foot width allowed for a two-car garage. Um, if you have more than a two-car garage, you can get an apron up to the width of the garage plus 18 inches on either side for a depth of 20 feet and back before it tapers to a 24 feet. So in any case, what we're proposing for a detached garage is gonna be substantially less than what you could get if you had an attached garage. We just felt that we weren't really keeping properties equal if they had an attached garage and a detached garage, and we were finding significant instances where we had properties that were, were not able to replace their driveways based upon our current regulations. Seems logical. We also, as we drove around and looked at some of these existing situations, we didn't feel that they were kind of at the heart of what the intent of the ordinance was, which was to prevent people from paving over their yards. No. <clears throat> Any questions for Tracy? Make a motion to approve. All right, I, I have a motion from Trustee Baumas. Second by Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Thomas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Next is formal, ad formal adoption of our 2020 Village Board meeting schedule. I'm happy to announce that Halloween falls on Saturday. That helps with next year. So similar to previous years and this year, we avoid some major holidays. The one change for next year is that um, I finally remembered to schedule village board meetings around voting and early voting. So everyone remembers the battle that we have in here as we're trying to wrap up early voting and get set up for election day on the next, next day. So there's elections in March and November. So we push those meetings to avoid that conflict. So the regular meetings in March will be on the first and fourth Mondays. Um, in November, uh, we're proposing the regular meetings on the second and fourth Mondays. So 
Um, other than that, it's consistent with the other holidays that we've, we've worked around in the past. And we have one meeting at the week of the beginning of spring break in March. So I don't, I don't think spring break is the issue that it used to be for some of us with kids. So we thought that that would work out. Anybody have any objections to this schedule? Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion from Trustee Baum, a second from Trustee O'Brien. All right, roll call, Donna. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Baumas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. All ayes. All right, we have a schedule for next year. All right, I'll open the floor to public comment. If anybody would like to come to the microphone, just state your name and address the board. Good evening, uh, I'm Nick Peart. Um, I was wondering, um, I've been trying to gather some information about internet security, and I was wondering if Gurney, um, if Gurney's doing anything to protect its citizens in public spaces, like the library and whatnot, and if there's anything that you guys have to say about that. Um, I would call Village Hall tomorrow and ask for uh, Jack Linehan, our public information officer right here. He can give you his card. Um, he can work with our IT director and tell you how we manage our public Wi-Fi. We only really have it in a couple of places. Um, but yeah, that's... Okay. If you just hold on until we close the meeting, Jack will give you his card and, and he can work Good. Connect you, you with IT and we'll help you understand. Don't we just have it in Walton, Walton Plaza? Plaza? Yeah, Walton Plaza. I mean, there is in our facilities. There's the ability to, for yeah. the public to, to hook onto. All right, so. we'll get you answers yep. on that. All right. Any other public comment tonight? If not, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee Garner. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.